All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Ferris, and I'm CYSO's operations manager, and I also run our jazz program at CYSO. Um, I would like to welcome you all to our very first CYSO's Getting Into College Masterclass that's specifically focused on jazz studies. We're very excited to have these wonderful panelists with us. Um, so really how tonight is going to go is we're going to offer the opportunity to answer some of your questions as well as have our panelists go through, um, you know, their entire extensive span of knowledge in the field. Um, right off the bat, I want to let you know if you have a question, put it down in the chat throughout um, this session at any point in time. Otherwise, we will also put my email in the chat and you can feel free to shoot me an email and I will uh, direct that question accordingly. Or if you forget to ask the question during the session or if something was missed, shoot me an email and then I'll make sure we get that answer for you. Um, so to get us started, I'd like to introduce each of our amazing panelists um, and give them an opportunity to say hello to you. Uh, so first up, we have Jerome Jennings, who is the resident director of Juilliard's Jazz Orchestra. Um, he's on file at Jazz at Lincoln Center, has an accredited jazz scholar, and has performed with legendary musicians such as Sonny Rollins, Wynton Marsalis, and the Count Basie Orchestra. So welcome, Jerome. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you. <laughs> uh, so next up, we have Brian Lynch, who is a professor of jazz and studio music at the Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. Um, certainly a nicer place to be than Chicago right now. Uh, Brian is a Yamaha Maybe. performing artist, <laughs> Yamaha performing artist, Grammy award-winning trumpeter, um, and as a band leader and recording artist, he's released over 20 critically acclaimed CDs featuring his distinctive composing and arranging and toured with the world, the world with various ensembles, reflecting his wide sweep of music. Welcome, Brian. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Thank you. Great to have you. Um, next up, we have Reggie Thomas, who is a professor and head of jazz studies at Northern Illinois University. Uh, Reggie can also be seen fronting his own groups on both piano and organ, and is often seen performing with Count Basie Orchestra. Uh, he's a clinician for Jazz at Lincoln Center and has performed in many major jazz festivals, uh, major jazz concert venues across the world. So welcome, Reggie. Thank you, thank you. Uh, glad to be here talking with you all and amongst my brethren. Good to see you all. We're glad you could make it. And last but not least, we have Sean Jones who is the Artistic Director of Carnegie Hall's NYO Jazz, as well as the Chair of Jazz Studies at Johns Hopkins University's Peabody Institute. Sean performs regularly with his own ensembles at Jazz at Lincoln Center and has worked with a number of artists. Um, and in 2011, uh, Sean was selected by Marcus Miller, Herbie Hancock, and Wayne Shorter for their tribute to Miles Stewart. Welcome, Sean. Thank you so much. It's great to be here with everyone, these wonderful uh, educators and all of you. Thank you. We also have everybody's bio listed up on our website, so I encourage you to go check them all out. They're all amazing performers and educators. Um, and of course, if I missed anything that you'd like to add throughout, um, please feel free to sprinkle in more information about yourselves. Um, but with that, I'm going to hand it over to the experts, um, specifically Perez Witted. Uh, Perez has worked with a variety of artists, including Clyde Hampton, Branford Marsalis, Wynton Marsalis, John Mellencamp, um, and many more. And among his many accomplishments as a performer, producer, composer, and arranger, he's also CYSO's director of jazz orchestra. So take it away, Perez. Why, thank you. Good Lord. I, I feel special. <laughs> well, we're going to try to keep this informal, but as informative as possible. I'm honored to be in here with these great uh, musicians and educators. I love everybody in here. We uh, tried to make this as, as uh, uh, diverse as possible. Uh, we have a uh, conservatory, we have university, uh, some different colors that create some different options for people. So we just want to get things started. We don't have a lot of time. We just wanted to get things started. There's a lot of questions out there that students are having, especially in this time of the pandemic and uh, 
you know, all this craziness that's going on. And one of the questions that they are posing to us is, um, well, let me, I got to jump down here to this one because this is the main one. What to expect in the college audition process and what changes to expect due to COVID-19. And uh, we want to just pop that out right now. And, and you can talk about your various situations because Sean, I know you're at a, uh, the conservatory down there, over there in uh, uh, Peabody. So, and I know you know about other programs as well. So uh, just start in on that and then we'll get some other folks to talk about it as well. Uh, thank you for the question. It's a great question. And um, for us, largely the requirements are the same. Um, in essence, what you want to do is you want to put your best foot forward, whatever that foot is. Um, and in my view, during the audition process to get into a university, that's not a good time to show what you're working on. That is a good time to show what you have uh, polished up. So you want it to be as polished as possible. You want to present a variety of styles to answer the direct question in that what is different during this time? Obviously, there's going to be a, a, a much more a recording. It's going to be much more recording, re recording based. You'll probably have to submit to varying universities um, either excerpts or full versions of tunes. Um, things that may be different is uh, whereas there is typically a um, sight reading component to our um, audition process at Peabody, that sight reading portion is not going to happen um, because it's pretty hard to assess that uh, during this time period. So I would say put your best foot forward, make sure that you are presentable on camera. Uh, if you don't have a good means to record and document yourself, ask your teachers, ask your parents, folks like that to get the, uh, the devices that will help you to shine as best as you can. And um, make sure that you speak directly to the, um, the heads of the departments at the universities that you are auditioning to. Uh, most of them, if not all of them, will be uh, very flexible, one. Number two, they'll give you a good idea of what they're looking for. And number three, they'll try to, you know, boost you up, give you, uh, make you feel confident about what you're putting forward. So that's what I would add to that. That's my answer. Cool. Uh, I, like I said, informal. Anybody else have any additional uh, informal Brian? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with uh, what, what Sean said. And I would only add that I think that when you get to the um, actual audition part of the process, it, it given that it's going to be a virtual audition, it could be important, if at all possible, to make sure that your, um, your audio setup can be conducive to getting making a, an accurate representation of your sound if you're able maybe and this maybe might be something that your band director could help you with in terms of if you can if there's if we recommend to all our students for instance that that they they need to get comfortable with using an audio interface and a regular microphone of some sort it's, it's just part of their this is just part of their equipment. It's just as much as their mutes. There you go. There's that. There's that focus right red that we uh, that we recommend to everybody right there. That's a very good, inexpensive, and very easy to use interface. Yep. There's another one. Oh, that's the new version of the one. Okay. Yeah. I tried getting mine out. I tried getting mine out. And my my old one doesn't work right now. So you know. I'm, before I start geeking out with the technology stuff, just just to say that it doesn't have to be elaborate. And, you know, there are even, um, I would just say that being aware of sound and, and how, and how it's, um, it, it makes a difference even when you're on Zoom. 
Um, also, the Zoom, if your audition is being conducted over Zoom, then make sure that you know about the optimal audio settings that will facilitate, you know, facilitate a good sound. And that's very easy to look up online. And even I, I believe in the Zoom website has things about that. They've done some things to opt to make the um, make the um, platform a little bit more audio friendly for musicians too. Um, in terms of I'll pass this on. I, mean, I can think of something else. I'll come, come back in. Okay. Reggie? Yeah, this is all great stuff that they're sharing with you. Um, musically, you know what we're looking for um, in terms of putting your best foot forward. And a couple of things I want you to keep in mind from the, the bits that have been shared with you already. Virtual auditions will happen in a couple of different forms. One could be a Zoom audition. So all of the things that uh, Professor Lynch is talking about right now are going to be really apropos to that, to having, uh, knowing how to get your settings in Zoom so that it's uh, most conducive to being able to hear, having a good interface, good microphone. Some of the auditions will be pre-recorded. That that is fine in a lot of cases as well. So we'll be accepting pre-recorded auditions. In those cases, some of the things that you want to think about, because we know that you're thinking about the the musical questions, but you also want to think about presenting yourself professionally, right? Uh, Think about the the background that you're going to record yourself in. Whether you know you don't necessarily want to be recording in your bedroom and there's your unmade bed and your cat runs across the back of the room while you're doing that. And you know we laugh, but we have all seen that. What you want to think about is that this is still a professional audition. You want to dress for it. You want to announce what you're doing appropriately. Um, <laughs> make your bed. You want to to just present yourself in the best possible light forward. As far as the sight reading question, we actually will still be doing sight reading. And so you want to check with each of the schools that you're auditioning for to find out exactly how they're doing things. Um, the way that we're doing it is that your sight reading will be uh, sent to you via email just before uh, you to do that portion of the audition. And that's something that will happen in a live setting. Some auditions like ours will be in two parts. Uh, so you're sending your pre-recorded material and then you will have just an audition meeting so that you can ask questions. We can ask questions of you. We can get to know each other that way and we can do the site reading portion. Um, the other thing that I wanna share about your pre-recorded portion. Make sure that you have taken care of the little details. How are you going to share it? If it is a file that is too large to be emailed, make sure that you are dealing with, I'm using Dropbox or I'm using WeTransfer or whatever it may be. If you are using one of those formats or you're using uh, Google Drive and sharing that way, make sure that you have taken care of the permissions that you need to give for uh, those who are adjudicating to be able to access your files. So all of those little things actually say a lot about you as a future student. So think about not just the musical things, but the technical parts as well. Jerome, did you wanna? Did yeah, you wanna... I mean, for, for at the Juilliard School, there's there's a, a few, pro, there's a it's, it's a, it's double or triple prong. I'm not really, uh, I'm not, as involved in the in the in the auditioning process and accepting of students, uh, I haven't been haven't made myself available for that. But I do know the first uh, the first tier in, in the auditioning process is to send in a, a, a actual audio MP3 first before before you're seen, and then you get selected uh, based off of what, what's heard. You know. Um, but sometimes there there are I would say uh, due to COVID and, and us having to 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 do these things uh, to do the in person um, remote um, there there could be a disparity depending on what students have what they can afford and what their family uh, are privy to to uh, the, the 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 computers and these different things so I, I think it's important to 
uh, be open and let us, let let your universe, the university, the com conservatory or, or college know uh, what what you may not have access to. Um, I'm sure these gentlemen here would not not accept a student who can play and has promise because they don't have a, a laptop or 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 they don't they don't they don't they can't afford a a, a, a interface. Um, I'm sure they would make concessions and, and, and try to fit, find a way to make that happen. And I, I think uh, that's a that 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 should be a part of of the package if it's if if it's not. Yeah, most definitely. And and uh, with these educators, these people I know for sure, they are more than willing to work with you at what, wherever you are with the technology and things like that. This, this whole climate is about adjustment. And uh, you're gonna find some really wonderful educators out there that are really considerate of uh, whatever situation you're in. And we're gonna keep the ball rolling. Some of the, the, the answers that we get, and let me tell you, that's why you guys are in here. <laughs> you covering so much material, it's great. I love it. I'm, I'm sitting up here taking notes myself. But um, this other question, there's, there's a, a kind of a, a overlap to it. It's uh, what are the major characteristics colleges look for or at during the admission process? And the characteristics, they're probably meaning, you know, uh, what are some of the major components that you're uh, uh, adjudicating them on or, or, or determining, making your decisions on. And, and that can include, um, you know, the audition, the grades, uh, the, 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 the recommendation letters, the everything like that. And I, I mean, I'm giving a lot of them away, but to what degree, and I know it's a, a, an adjustable scale based on different qualities, but who wants to chime in on that first? Well, let's take, uh, <laughs> you guys acting like my students. I'll, I'll dive in there. I'll, I'll dive in. It's the, I, I was just trying to be polite. <laughs> I think we all are, but um, I, you know, for, for me, the first thing is sound. And what I mean by sound is actually the actual quality of sound that you make on your instrument and how you project that sound. Um, that's extremely important because that shows me that you have studied the, uh, at least the fundamentals of your instrument. That's important. Number two, yes, I do look at grades. I look at your transcripts uh, to see how you are academically, specifically with Johns Hopkins University is it's much, it's much easier to get into the conservatory, Peabody Conservatory, than it is to get into Johns Hopkins University. In order to get into Johns Hopkins University, you have to have at least a 2.8 GPA. If you don't have a 2.8 GPA, it's very hard to get you in. Uh, lastly, and, uh, and um, sometimes it's most important, is I wanna know what your personality is like. Would you fit inside of our department? Well, um, I view our department as a family and we only accept, you know, the maximum amount of folks that will ever be in this department is 50 individuals. And so I know where everyone lives. I know their phone numbers. We talk all the time. You know, when we order in person, we go to lunch, we hang, I know their parents. And so you have to fit inside of that family for us. And so the audition and the conversations are extremely important. And we also look for you to be an ambassador for the music. When you go out and you perform with other folks, are you are you representing this music uh, in the way that it should be represented? Okay. So if you can play extremely well, but you know, you know, your personality is kind of like, mm, or you're not taking care of business on the other side, then we would accept someone else that doesn't perf doesn't play quite as well, but you know, we could tell they want to learn, we could tell they want to be molded, and they have a vision for their future. So that's uh, what that's what we look at. Brian. 
Yeah. Um, I think ability is important. And of course, you know, um, along the lines of what Mr. Jones said, um, you know, things like, like sound, I think are very important indicators of the, of maybe not just even, the, you know, just the instrumental playing, but, but the whole personality and engagement with the music. So what I was going to say is like, talent's important, but I think what I'm looking for in some senses, even more than that, is the sense of engagement with the music. And this, and this, this to me has a cultural component to it. And, um, you know, I, whereas we're, you're coming to school to learn and, and, and not expected to have everything completely finished. Why else, why else would you go to school otherwise? I do think that a sense of, of uh, you, know, you know, a sensibility that is going to, you know, make me see that, that you know, uh, again, like an in, in, engagement with the art form, you know, this is, this is, I, I represent, you know, I'm representing the teaching of a cultural art form. So, so that, that, in, that implies an engagement with the culture and, and the, and the overall characteristics of, of what produced the music, you know, and so having a sense of that, and, you know, it's a kind of, it, that maybe that's just a fancy way of saying what kind of person you are and and um, that means a lot and I mean I also feel that that you know my role is to you know if you don't know something if you can't do something then let's see if we can work it out and and and, and, and get that happening um, it's you know, I think I'm looking at the whole student to 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 a great degree. Um, the you know I teach at a university. We're a school of music, but we're within a university, and we're subject to the same sort of of you know of admission rules. And you know and and to be very honest with you, this can be a place where sometimes the um, you know you know we have to. We have to we have to go to bat and fight sometimes to get the students that we really want, you know. Um, and I'm I am definitely there to to advocate and fight for the students that I think are you know right for the program, and um, you know. Um, but at the same point, you do have to have a academic. You have to engage with what what the what the uh, what the situation is in terms of getting into the school and what their standards are. So GPA and scores and all that kind of stuff are important, and and that's irrespective about what I might think about those things myself. They're still important. I'll say, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it right there. <laughs> I was going to say, Jerome, why don't you go ahead just so that we don't go in the same order all the time. Okay, okay. well, I, I, I suggest that students um, realize and understand that every university, every university and, and college has a, a culture that they, that, and that, they, that they are trying to incubate and, and have, consist, have consistent year to year. Um, and, you know, and, and it changes every once in a while, but I, I, I would suggest that students um, do, do, do your homework on, on past programming, maybe a, maybe a program of what, what, what the, the, the school's uh, uh, um, pa past uh, concert programs were. Uh, check out if they have a mission statement. Check out if they have a, a, some kind of a, um, a statement that you know, shows that they, the, the, the culture of the, of the actual place. Even You can even look up people who might have even gone there who may have graduated a year a year ago or two years, or even more, uh, shoot them an email. Ask them ask them how was it studying with such and such. Uh, w w you know they can learn that if you go to if you want to audition at Peabody, you gotta you, you gotta work on your sound to impress the chair uh, because they were there before you uh, uh, at the Juilliard School. Also, when you know the culture, uh, you won't have expectations. Uh, that's far beyond what that school will 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 want or or, or will allow. I mean, uh, if you want to go to the Juilliard School, for instance, 
you, you, you're not going to be able to play electric electrified effects on your trombone uh, in at the school because that's just not what we do. Not there. It's okay to do it outside, but that's just something that we 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 just we don't do that. Um, if you want to come to the Juilliard School, you're going to learn how to play jazz age big band big band charts. You're going to play the music of Fletcher Henderson. You're going to play Bill Chalice arrangements. You're going to deal with Don Redmond. That's what you're going to do. You're going to have to double if you're if you're a saxophone player. You're going to have to understand, you know, you know the, the 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 functionality of a, of a clarinet of a of a a flute and and you know other woodwinds so every every university every every conservatory every college they have something they have what they do and what they what they want to achieve and what they want their program to 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 achieve and and, and what they want their students to, to to come away with and and you should do a little homework on your own to find that out yeah right yeah. Yeah, those are some great points. And I'm going to piggyback on a lot of what has been said already. Um, I want to get back to the first part of the question, which was about um, expectations in terms of tests and scores and how that's weighted with performance and all of that. And there are a lot of changes that are happening right now. So this isn't to say that we are not concerned with academics because we absolutely are. We it is our mission to graduate students. And anything that we see as a hindrance to being able to graduate you and graduate you within a reasonable amount of time. We don't wanna spend eight years graduating you. I tell my students all the time, I am the mother bird that is going to kick you out of the nest. That's my job is to graduate you. I love you and I'd like to keep you around, but that's not what we're here for. So academic success is a part of that, especially if you're going to a college or university, you're getting a liberal arts degree, that is a part of it. Having said that, we are realizing something that I realized years ago, that uh, standardized tests such as the ACT and SAT are not always valid predictors of success in college. Right, There were cultural biases that had been built into it, depending on where you were coming from. You may score a certain way on that test and totally bomb it. That does not mean that you're not college material. It means that there was a cultural bias possibly um, in how that test was made. So given that there are a lot of schools, Northern Illinois is one of those that are going to a testing optional um, um, application process. So you don't actually have to have an ACT score or an SAT score to get into the school. We're looking at other factors as well. That can include GPA, that includes uh, class standing, right? So we're still concerned with academic success, but we are in some cases doing away with those former predictors that we would use. Um, something that uh, Professor Jennings was just talking about that is so vitally important. It is important that you do your research on what the schools are and what their priorities are. What, you know, what am I going to be dealing with at that school? For example, we are a school of music also inside of a state university. Um, we are not a conservatory um, such as uh, the Peabody program. Given that, there are certain things that we feel are important to a liberal education, right, that are inclusive in our program, that's saying, well, hey, we need to understand all of these different things. Um, we need to come from this perspective. There are some programs, for example, that may say, we're dealing with more new and cutting edge and, and, and uh, new approaches or new compositions. There are some programs that, may say, hey, we're looking for more historical perspective to inform what it is we're doing and how we're going to move forward. And you'll find anywhere between there, all levels of different balance. You need to check that out with the programs that you're going to in terms of what type of people, because I really appreciate that uh, Professor Jones and Professor Lynch said this, we are looking for quality people in our programs. And when we say quality people, we're not just talking about quality players, but I happen to believe this, the true mission 
of the colloquium, which is what college comes from, was to bring together the collected wisdom and knowledge for use of the good of our community and society, right? That's what we're looking to do. You want to know that um, your professors care a little bit more about things than just whether or not you can play over 251, right? But what are you involved in? What do you stand for? What that's going to determine the types of experiences that you will have in your program. And we look for those things many times by way of, like I said, that face-to-face -face interview that we will do in your audition, but also if you are ever asked to write um, a, a short essay, which is a part of a lot of application processes, those are the things we're looking for in those essays. Those are the things that we're looking for um, those that we get rec letters of recommendation from, those are the things that they are speaking to. So looking for well-rounded individuals. I'm fond of saying, you know, our, our medium may be music, but our message and what we're teaching about is life and humanity. So that takes a whole person, not just somebody that can play a killing blues solo. Hey, Amen. Oh my goodness. Yes. So like, um, you you touched on uh, on recommendation letters and as being somebody who has who writes and has written my share of recommendation letters, uh, I like for you know briefly you guys to just tap on how important those are to your evaluation. Reggie, you can start, you can start yeah. off. Let me go first because there's something that is just <laughs> right at the front of my thoughts right now. Realize that your letter of recommendation is being written now. Matter of fact, it was the start of your letter of recommendation. They started writing it when you were a freshman or a sophomore or whatever it was when you came into that program. You're writing your le letter of recommendation at that time. Because what your band director or teacher or boss or whoever it is that you're getting to provide that letter is talking about is what they have seen in you from the beginning of their time with you up until now, right? And we actually, because we write a lot of letters of recommendation, we know how to read through the lines very well too. We know how when someone is trying to warn us about someone's attitude. Right, and that is a part of it. So just be aware that you are writing your letter of recommendation now, and we do take those things seriously. Because uh, I, I have some things to say about recommendation letters, but I wanted you guys to make sure you were able to, you know, if you had something. Hey, to jump on in there, say it. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I deal with, you know, high school students in all these various programs. I know you guys do too. But you know, with CYSO, I'm 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 right there in the trenches in Ravinny as well. But I've had students come to me after they have disappeared for three years and ask me to write a recommendation letter. And I'm I look at them like so I don't know if you want me to write this letter because I don't know you anymore. You know, I knew you two, three years ago but I don't know you right now. And, and I understand why you come to ask me because I know a lot of folks in, in this business, but if you're going to ask someone for a recommendation letter, must be someone that you are actively involved with, all right? And if you know that someone is, some, is a person you will be asking, your best bet would be to continue to develop that relationship with them. Even if you just look at it as it's just good business, you know, because you, you can't go and ask someone to write about something they don't know about because it's their reputation that is also on the line. Each one of these educators in this room right now have a respect for people out there in the, you know, the music field who are, you know, teaching high school programs. And when they write a letter, they read them. 
and they take them seriously. And if we send someone who is not quite what's in the letter, they see that. And that is not just a, a bad mark on the student, it's a bad mark on the person that wrote the letter. So we have to be honest. And we want all students to realize that when you're in high school, it's, it's just like, that's your job. It's business. You need to handle your business. Continue to cultivate and develop great relationships with your teachers, with uh, uh, educators and, and people in the field. You have to continue to do that. And if you have a, 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 a kind of, let's say a, a lazy attitude or not a, not a good attitude, that's something you need to start working on right now because that's not gonna change when you go to college. It's not gonna change. So those are things that you need to look at and address right now and ask for help. Ask, that's why we're here. We are constantly, uh, we, we make ourselves available. So ask, you can ask about that. You don't need to just ask about how do I play over this, this chord? Ask about things like, you know, like you're doing right now. What do I need to do to prepare for this? Well, that recommendation letter is very important. And that deals with your character, which is, uh, as everyone has said here and directly or in so many words, that is just as important as your playing because we send people out there to be citizens of the world, to represent not just uh, uh, you, but the music and the universities or the high schools or the programs that you come from, the teachers that you have studied with. You, you represent everything that you've been through. So um, take that into consideration and if you know you're not handling that right now, it's never too late to change. You know, start dealing with those things right now. You got a, a lot of the questions that students have, have asked that we have here, you are answering <laughs> just as we go through this. And it's great. I, I'm talking about like uh, uh, the, the GPA question in the SAT and things like that. That was one of their questions. What I would like for you to do though, is uh, give us a uh, clear distinction between a conservatory and a university. Just a clear distinction between that. And, and that's one of the questions they had as well. Uh, Sean, yeah, if, if I could chime in here but before I have to take off, I just wanna to respond to something that you, you said, uh, Ferez. In, about recommendation letters and the folks that are writing them. Um, for the parents and the educators, specifically high school educators, middle school educators that are listening to this discussion, it is an extreme disservice for you to um, write a letter of letter, letter of recommendation that you know is disingenuous about a student. Please do not do that. It is better that you either say no or you give us the truth because what happens is because they are misrepresent misrepresent uh misrepresented <clears throat> in that letter then we have to figure out what to do with them for four years or we have to give them bad news or say hey listen this is not where it's at right now you have to get that together um we are the guardians of this culture we're the guardians of the music we're the guardians of the future of it. So it is extremely important that we're honest with one another and that, that our students and youth know that we're all on the same team and that we all have that same standard. Uh, regarding the question that you uh, just asked about uh, what's the difference between a conservatory and a university, uh, I would say the main difference is that a conservatory is kind of insular, okay? you'll spend most of your life on that particular part of campus if the, if the conservatory is connected to a university or if the conservatory is a standalone institution, you will live there and there won't be quite as rigorous of a liberal arts requirement or, um, 
or, or requirements like liberal arts requirements that are outside of what your general degree path is. Inside of a university setting or a college setting, you have to deal much more with those uh, extracurricular activities as I like to call them. However, I believe that you get a more well-rounded education um, when you leave high school and you go into higher academia it's important to get as much out of the experience as you possibly can, as much as of a well-rounded experience as you poss possibly can. So if you're going to a place like a Curtis or something like that, that is kind of insular, um, you wanna make sure that you're still exploring the world around you. Make sure that you're studying other things, okay? If you're going to somewhere like a Johns Hopkins University or a Frost School or something like, or uh, where Professor Thomas is, uh, Northern Illinois is Northern Illinois. If you make, if you if you're going to a place like that, you want to make sure that you're hanging with other folks other than musicians. Okay, hang with the scholars in other departments. Get with the baddest cats that are in law, the baddest cats that are in medicine, all of that, and create your team so that upon graduation you all have a base that you can call home, you can call each other 10, 20, 30 years from now for those services uh, from those individuals, okay? So that, that's what I'll add to that. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of this conversation. I really appreciate it. We appreciate you being here, sir, appreciate it. Um, I know Sean's probably gonna have to blast off. I know we're, we're under the gun, but I wanted uh, uh, Reg, uh, Professor Thomas and uh, Professor Lynch to uh, talk about it from their side, although uh, Sean did el elaborate on that. But if you guys could uh, talk about what you see, uh, the variations that, that may be there. Yeah, there are a couple of things I can talk about. And um... You can just explain differences pretty well. And it largely does come down to requirements that you would have outside of your field uh, as opposed to simply studying music. You know, in a music conservatory, you get to, that is your focus. Um, even within a, a liberal arts education, music is different from other degree paths in that in other areas of liberal education, liberal arts education, you can take your gen ed courses and things like that for the first two years and then kind of gradually get into your major courses in your last couple of years. Music is not like that anywhere. Music, you walk in the door and you are inundated with your music classes immediately because if you don't, you will be behind. If you don't start in, in music theory right away, if you don't get in class piano, if you don't are not dealing with oral skills and ear training and just the number of courses that you'll need to take, you will be behind. So as a freshman, you walk in with a, a bit of the same type of thing that you will deal with uh, in a conservatory. However, you're trying to balance that with, but I still got a science class over here and an English class over here, and I've got to do that for a couple of years. So because of that balance, um, the requirements of you in all of the areas may be a little different than someone being as stern on you within a conservatory in your first couple of years. Not to say that we're going to take it light on you, but we understand that um, studying uh, your instrument is not the only thing that you're doing. And we actually are encouraging you to be broad individuals. We're looking for people who are intellectually curious. Um, at the same time, and it's going to be different with every school you look at. So it's important for you to do your homework and do your research. Um, with many conservatories, you have to look at, well, okay, what is kind of this conservatory's model? And what I mean by that is that there are many conservatories that were built, just look at the age of the institution, that were built on a Western European model, and that is how things are structured. Jazz education is still relatively new in that respect. We're only talking jazz education from about 1958, right? The conservatory model goes back much further than that. So you have to understand, well, what is this institution going to be looking 
uh, for from me in this conservatory setting? What is the requirement about what my lessons are actually in? Am I doing lessons in classical trumpet or am I in jazz lessons right away? Am I doing some type of split lesson format where I'm doing half lesson in this and half lesson in that? What are my ensemble requirements? Are they in jazz or do I also have ensemble requirements outside of that? And all of that's gonna differ uh, by school, even in, in um, universities colleges and liberal arts colleges and universities that will differ. So the best thing that you can do is do your homework to know, okay, what are the requirements of that institution? Yeah. Uh, Jerome, we wanted to make sure you were able to jump in here real quick. I know you're on a spot. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, guys. Unfortunately, I got to go. I'm sorry, Brian, to, to, to jump in there on you. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think... Um, it is it is important again to, to understand the, the the culture of the school that you that you're going into um with with most conservatories the juilliard schools it, we're, it's very insular uh, as, as sean put it um, beautifully it, it's uh um what, what what's happening is um we want to to well round our students and me, for one, in, in, in my class, I like to historically and culturally co contextualize everything we do, everything we play. So I expect my students to speak about uh, a piece before we play it, right? Um, to, 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 to get that, that sort of understanding. Um, and that's a kind of shift in, in how the program has been. Um, but you can always ask um, the, the the chair of the departments what is the culture. I'm sure that they are they can provide you with a, a path. And I'm sure Reggie has Red, Ms., uh, Professor Thomas. I'm sure he has materials. I'm sure Professor Lynch has materials that that will button point what they what what they expect from their students in in in, in that particular culture, um, and. Man, I'm, this is an amazing uh, panel, and I wish you we had it when I was getting out of high school because it would have been very, very helpful to hear that, uh, Professor Thomas. It took me five times to pass the SAT. I didn't think I would get into college. Just to let any of you, of the young people, know who are listening that 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 have anxiety taking tests, I had anxiety taking tests. And it's great that your universe, your, your your university is providing students with an option to not feel that this test can can ultimately cause the, the fate of of their educational experience. You know, but I'm sorry, everybody. I gotta I gotta run. I'm... <laughs> hey, brother, it's good catching up with you. Likewise, likewise. Good to meet you. Thanks for being here. All right. Take care. Thank Peace. You. So, uh, Brian. Yeah, I mean, everybody has said such great things. I don't have too much to add. I mean, I guess that that I know there's a kind of a working assumption. I have to get this earbud out of my ear. I can't hear myself talk. Um, I, don't, I don't know sort of a working assumption that the conservatory model or the school of music model is you know is where um students that are more artistically inclined and maybe maybe are they haven't spent as much time taking care of the academic part of things can can flourish a little easier but I would sort of push back against that a little bit. I mean, I, I do think I do think that it's it's again it's what we're talking about is is that the the, the we're I think all of us as educators are in one way or another another kind of you know we're existing and and I think also maybe struggling with a system that that has cultural biases uh, in, embedded baked into the cake and slowly, um, you know, and, and some of the things that have been happening lately have really, I think, you know, in, you know, put a fire. It's been a long time coming. 
right? And 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 it'll 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 still be probably a long time before it really gets straightened out, as as I'm sure my colleagues can attest to more eloquently than I ever could. Um, but but you know there there are some changes being made, and and our school is also going to a test optional model. Um, it, fairly soon and and you know this is this is very much in the air um you know i i think that that it's important to realize that and and also i'd i'd really advocate for the for the notion that 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 really if you're conscious of of what of what the metrics are and and that and in a lot of cases, the metrics are a little bit artificial. Is that you? Sh you, you should you should look look for somewhere where you you can have a, a relationship, and that the personality of, of what of who you are as a person and who you are as a mu musician can come through and flourish. You know, school maybe the schools were that that are that are a little bit have too much emphasis on that sort of thing. Are maybe not the best schools, and um, and I and I think looking, you know, be be critical of be critical of the institution, be critical of of the of the of the of the educators that are that are the interface with these institutions in terms in terms of knowing knowing what's right for you, you know, um, um, I mean I I think that um, it's it's really it's really important that it's it's a two, it's a two way street there. I wanted to say one thing about you we were talking about the recommendation letters, and I was wondering, maybe from 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 my colleagues here about what about the um, what about the role of the personal essay? Do, do you do you require personal essays, uh, uh, Professor Tom Thomas, in your school? We do, and. Um... Thanks for bringing that up because I want to echo something actually that uh, Prof. Jones said earlier about how we don't, we do our students a disservice when we write letters of recommendation that are disingenuous. The same is true yes. when you write your, the personal essay for your, your child. Parents, please, let's get out of that habit. You know, you, yes, you can help them edit and help them wordsmith, but we have seen cases where that personal essay was not reflective of the person that came to the school. Um, and it's, it's not really fair to that student because we're, you're setting them up for some hard times. Um, so yes, we do require a personal essay and we're looking at that because what we're looking for is what kind of person uh, you are. And we expect that you you should be looking at us the same way to know what kind of people we are. Uh, I want to say amen to something else that uh, you just said, Brian, um, regarding um, looking at studying music as being less than academically. You know, People say all of the time, well, it's not rocket science, to which I answer, no, it's not. It's harder. Rocket science, you get to learn the formulas, rely on the formula, use that formula all of the time. We're talking a different level of education. We're talking um, individuals who I really do believe are amongst the most intelligent people walking this planet. Musicians. I know it particularly jazz musicians and how we use our brains. So this idea that you don't have to have any type of intellect to study music is, is just nonsensical. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah. I mean, I think even more than that is that, is that there's the, the notion of some sort of binary between, between the sort of, you know, the performer's intelligence or the mu yes. musician's intelligence and the kind of intelligence that to take so-called academic pursuits. I've had numerous students that have transited from being great being great young players into being great young academics. As a matter of fact, I, there's a number of them that are doing both. Yes. You know, I have a student right now who who is in my ensembles who's who's doing his PhD in musicology at Harvard right now, and 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 he still plays great. 
you know, and I firmly believe it's it's the it's that the 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 portable part of the intelligence is 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 the part that comes from that comes from the music. So one thing I would say, this is one thing where I think going to a university rather than a conservatory can be very sal salutary, is that if you have an if you have an opportunity to see how what you do in music can interface with other with the with 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 the other disciplines, so to speak. I had a student who came in and and he was, you know, we have we have something called a Bachelor of Arts in music, which is which is uh, something something that where you can take all the music courses, but you you can spend a little bit more time on other things too. So some of the requirements are a little bit different. So this young man was, you know, looking around for something to, to you know, kind of go towards. And I, I kept on saying, well, you know, you know, he said he was taking a he was taking a class in neuroscience. I said, well, you know, you know, um, jazz musicians are 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 the the best subjects for neuroscience that there are because of all the things that they could do in some. This this young man ended up like he's work. You know, he got he took a fifth year and got a dual degree in, in, in neuroscience and music and went on and, 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 went, and went into neuroscience while still maintaining, maintaining his playing. And so, I mean, I think that I regard what we do as a sort of a master discipline for, for life. And, you know, and I think that the effects of of what we do really radiate out into all these other dimensions and 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 we should both encourage want to encourage students to explore that but also be advocating for the centrality of our of, of what we do in in i mean we know that but 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 it's but but i think everyone else could know more of that the one thing i wanted to say about the recommendation about the personal essays professor thomas i couldn't agree more you do yourself a disservice my experience is that there's usually an inverse relationship to the bravado that's that or or the or the the grandiosity that's exhibited in a personal essay and and the actual talent or the actual maybe the the personality of of the of of the um of the applicant yeah. um that's that's a crude way to say that perhaps but i think it's i think like the you know personal essays i think should balance exhibiting achievement with 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 a sense of humility and also a sense of um, a sense of gratitude for having the opportunity to you know everyone has got to know that like you know you know you know that you're getting into this it's it's not like it's not like going to law school you know, and so and so sometimes when when I see rec, when I see personal e essays that mention things about well the my aims and my aims in in being prepared for the music industry is and then well this is not an industry I mean it, it, it may be for some but 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 it, it's it's an art form it's a cultural art form it's um, it's. It's like it's like Mr. Adderley said about 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 soul. It's not a state of it's not a state of mind. It's a way of life, right? Yeah. So you know, uh, I I couldn't agree more. Humility, gratitude, but the other one that I want to keep in there is curiosity. Oh, much so, right? much so, Because yes. one of the problems that we have as students, and when I'm saying we, I'm not just talking about you as young students. I mean we as human beings and being students of life, is that we have a sense of what we know and we have a sense of what we don't know. What we don't know or what we don't have a sense of is what we don't know, right? We don't know what we don't know. There are things that are not on your purview because you don't even know to be aware about that, right? So you, you know what you know, you think you know what you don't know, but then there's this whole other realm 
of what you don't even know you don't know, right? And you're only going to get that part if you remain humble, grateful, and curious. Right. That's about the first level of wisdom is that you know that you do not know. Yeah. And even getting to that point can be can be quite a journey sometimes for for young folks well, you and guys, old folks, too. <laughs> you guys have answered just about all the questions on here. I mean, this last one, uh, uh, what, what other opportunities are there to study music if I don't want to be a performance major? You basically have covered that. You know, there, there are so many the, within the discipline, there are areas and then even to take that musical knowledge and apply it to life and all these various avenues that we go in, the, the, the ability that we have to think in different ways, to think outside of the box, to create, to be creative and to understand that that is a, a major part of what we do. Those qualities we can take, like we know there's so many doctors and, and engineers and, and professionals who have studied music and they've used that education to better them in the fields that they're in. So, man, I'm, I mean, I've, I'm honored to be in this, in this, we, I really, I really hope we'll be able to do more of this type of study where we can get more information from knowledgeable people as themselves and, and understand folks that this is not just these universities and conservatories that we're today, they're top of the food chain but they're not the only one right there are some other ones out there and as everyone in here said do your homework you have to investigate the schools that you want to attend get all the information you can, talk to the faculty, talk to the faculty and talk to students that go to those universities and conservatories. Talk to them and find out what it is you know, they have to offer and whether or not what you have to do to the is something that will fit in. And uh, your experience will be so much better. And remember, honesty is the best policy. So. In the recommendation letters, you want complete honesty. In the, the uh, 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 essays, you want to be honest. You want to be honest about who you are and what your ambitions are, what your dreams are, and things like that. You want to be honest about all of that. But uh, Professor Brian Lynch, Professor Reggie Thomas, also we have Professor Stan Jones and Professor Jerome Jennings in here. Uh, and and Katie Perry, uh, sitting up there, uh, uh, keeping me in line because I am so prone to just take off. But she kept me on the on the uh, one with uh, the comments, keeping me in check. <laughs> hey, y'all! I'm gonna mask up and teach a lesson here. So yeah. good, good speaking with you all. It's been great to be with you guys. Time. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. All right. All right. Bye bye.